Hello, welcome in the 15th lecture of convective heat transfer course. Uh, in this lecture, we will be discussing about thermal entrance length. In our last two lectures, we have discussed about uh, thermally fully developed region mainly, but here we will be discussing at the beginning of the duct what happens. That means when uh, the temperature profile is developing to get a steady state profile. Okay, uh, so this thermal entrance region we have already uh, defined in uh, our uh, 11th lecture. So there we have shown uh, that at the beginning how temperature profile uh, actually gets developed into a uh, into a parabolic one. Okay, so here we will be showing uh, that uh, entrance length region and uh, that too in this lecture we will be considering uniform uh, wall temperature case. Okay, so that means the pipe is actually being wrapped up with some heating coil uh, which is maintaining the wall temperature at constant. Okay, uh, if you have the other extent that means the heat flux is constant. So, whatever um, the heating, uh, heating coils are supplying to the uh, uh, fluid inside the pipeline uh, that is actually heat flux is constant that case you need to uh, see in the next lecture. Okay. Uh, so, as I have mentioned that we will be discussing about thermal entrance region over here thermal entrance region with uniform wall temperature. Okay. So, let me at the beginning tell you that uh, what will be the outline what things we will be covering in this lecture. We will be introducing the concept of uh, thermal entrance length okay, in hydrodynamically fully developed, but thermally developing flowing pipe. Uh, this uh, as a assumption we are doing over here that we are considering the flow hydrodynamically has developed. That means, it has taken a parabolic velocity profile, but temperature has not yet grown uh, into a steady state profile. Okay. So, though it is hydrodynamically developed, fully developed, but thermally developing flow okay, inside a pipe. Then we will be uh, deriving the energy equation and uh, subsequent boundary condition and we will be giving a non-dimensional form to this one for uniform wall temperature case, okay, uniform wall temperature around a duct. Okay. Uh, we will try to reduce the energy equation into a uh, simplified form which can be solved okay. and uh, uh, that we will be doing uh, for thermally developing region with uh, constant wall temperature boundary condition. Okay. And finally, we will try to determine by, uh, uh, by this uh, uh, equ equation energy equation, we will try to determine the Nusselt number uh, for thermally developing, but hydrodynamically fully developed force convection uh, around a duct okay, having constant temperature. Okay. So, let me start uh, with this schematic. So, here we will be considering hydrodynamically developed, but thermally developing flow. Usually this type of problems are called uh, Gretsch flow, okay? uh, Gretsch problem we can call. Okay? So, here you see this is our uh, pipeline, let us say, uh, let us say here we are having the center line, okay? here we are having the center line and now uh, somehow the velocity boundary layer has developed and has taken actually a, uh, a actually a parabolic profile okay and then you see over here we are considering that suddenly we are starting to heat over here uh, the wall is getting a constant temperature t equals to tw okay uh, and uh, here the fluid whatever was coming with a parabolic velocity profile have a constant temperature ti okay and this is your uh, axial direction of the duct and uh, this is your radial direction okay the temperature profile will also become developed after a certain uh, length and what is the consequence in the further downstream section those things we have discussed in the last two lectures. Here our major concentration will be over here uh, at the beginning of the heating section uh, this region is called actually thermal entrance region. Okay. You can see I have shown here the uh, boundary layer thermal boundary layer being developed. By the way what is thermal boundary layer this concepts we have already discussed in uh, lecture 11. Okay. So, uh, this boundary layer will be developing over here and whenever they will be merging at the center line beyond that we will be having thermally developed uh, uh, thermally developed region. Okay. 
So let me uh, try to first see what non-dimensional parameter we can use as here you can find out uh, this uh, thermal entrance region is uh, small in length we can take uh, the scale of that one is R0 which is nothing but the radius of the tube. Okay? So we are non-dimensionalizing Z bar the axial direction by R0 which is nothing but the radius of the tube. So Z is equals to Z bar by R0. Okay? Obviously, uh, the radius, uh, non-dimensionalized radius can be taken as R bar by R0. For non-dimensionalization of temperature, we are considering theta. So, theta is nothing but T minus Tw by Ti minus Tw, where Ti is the uh, inflow temperature okay, and Tw is the wall temperature, constant wall temperature. Okay. And as we have considered velocity boundary layer is fully developed, that means taking a parabolic velocity profile, we consider that uh, uh, W, which is non-dimensionalized uh, 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 velocity, axial velocity is nothing but W bar by W average, W bar average is nothing but 2 into 1 minus R square, a parabolic velocity profile. Okay. Now let me show you that what will be the equation. So uh, the convection will be having only one term. Okay, so axial uh, convection term because other two u and uh, v, those two things will be zero because it is uh, thermally uh, hydrodynamically fully developed condition. Okay, so u and v is zero. Only w is having getting a parabolic velocity profile like this. So only single term in our convection will be remaining w del t del z. Okay. And in the conduction side, we will be having all uh, or terms, but in this we are only considering uh, um, uh, that radial and uh, axial terms are remaining and we are having azimuthal symmetry. So, uh, theta directional terms we will not be considering over here. Okay. So, if you, uh, if you expand this equation, so you will be getting uh, that uh, ex if you expand and if you try to put all these uh, non-dimensional parameters uh, and replace the dimensional terms, then you will be getting the convection is becoming W average into W. So, this W bar is giving W average uh, into W and this T is actually releasing one T i minus T W and Z is releasing R W and as a result uh, del T del Z is becoming del theta del Z. Okay. On the other hand, in the right hand side, uh, uh, this theta uh, is actually being uh, uh, replaced uh, T is being replaced by theta and one T i minus T w is being released and everywhere we are having second uh, order term that means R square Z square and here first order but multiplied with R. So, we can find out one R naught square can uh, come outside because both Z and R we have considered of the order of R naught. Okay. So, ultimately this uh, equation we are getting for the uh, uh, hydrodynamically developed but thermally developing flow. Okay. So, if you simplify it little bit, then you can get that over here alpha uh, and then uh, R naught into W average will be giving you uh, Peclé number. Okay. So, Peclé number by 2 and here we can get uh, the rest terms W into del theta del Z is equals to radial conduction term and then the axial conduction term. Okay. Now, if we put the value of W which is nothing but uh, uh, 2 into 1 minus R square, then we will be getting equation of this form. Okay. And subsequent boundary conditions definitely at r equals to wall at r equals to 1 that means at the wall we are having theta equals to 0 because uh, t becomes tw. Okay. And at r equals to 0 obviously there will be no gradient of temperature so del theta del r is equals to 0. Now, uh, at z uh, tends to minus infinity that means far uh, before uh, the pipe entry obviously theta will be uh, 1 as t becomes t i. Okay. And at z tends to infinity that means if you go far downstream in the pipeline. So, there uh, we are not knowing what is the value of theta because that will be depending on the length and uh, um, so we can write down that this theta is nothing but actually uh, will be bounded. Okay. Next, uh, as our interest is uh, lying in this thermal entrance region, so let us first do a little bit of uh, a scale analysis. So, if you see uh, this uh, thermal entrance region uh, will be actually uh, having 1 minus r. 
okay 1 minus r why because uh, this 1 minus r is nothing but your thermal boundary layer thickness okay so we can write down 1 minus r is of the order of the uh, boundary layer delta okay so this boundary layer delta is of the order of 1 minus r now if you use this one then you can write down 1 minus r square which is a dominant term in the left hand side convection side in the equation so you can get this becomes 1 minus r into 1 plus r 1 plus r is obvious of the order of 1. So, you can get this 1 minus r square is of order delta okay. and definitely z we have already considered of the z bar is of the order of delta. Uh, so, this z becomes of the order of 1. Okay. Now, let us try to see that what are the orders of all these uh, terms one by one. So, first uh, if we see that uh, del theta by del r term, so del theta by del r. So, as theta is of order 1, uh, it varies between 0 and 1. So, it can be of order 1, r will be of order delta. So, del theta del r term is of the order of 1 by delta. Similarly, del theta del z, here theta is of order 1 and z is of order 1 already we have mentioned. So, this becomes also of order 1. Okay. If you go, go for the second order derivative, so second order derivatives it will become 1 by delta delta square as del theta del r is 1 by delta and del theta del uh, del square theta del z square obviously will remain same because z is of order 1. Okay. So, we have got all the terms okay, uh, order of all the terms. Now, if we try to see what is the convection order, if you see the convection order. So, del theta del z was actually of order 1, but 1 minus r square is of the order of delta. So, we find out multiplication of this one is of the order of delta. Okay. Let us see the radial conduction that means these two terms. If you see these two terms obviously, we are finding out that this Peclé number can be taken in the radial conduction side in the conduction side rather. So, it is 1 by Peclé number and then both the term we are having uh, 1 by delta square for the first term and for the second term it is nothing but 1 by delta into r which is of the order of delta. So, it is actually 1 by uh, delta uh, square term. Okay. Uh, no, actually this term is actually becoming uh, pec 1 by Peclé number order and this term is becoming 1 by Peclé number into 1 by delta square. So, this term will be actually dominating amongst these two terms. So, the uh, uh, magnitude or scale of the radial conduction will become 1 by Peclé into 1 by delta square. Okay. Then axial conduction, if you see axial conduction that already we have proved that this is of order 1 as 1 by Peclé number came in this side. So, it becomes of 1 by Peclé numbers. Okay. So, here from you can get that between these two conduction obviously, uh, uh, this one is having higher uh, magnitude. So, uh, radial conduction dominates over the axial conduction. If we equate uh, this convection and conduction side, we get Peclé number is actually 1 by delta cube or we can write down delta is of the order of 1 by Peclé number to the power 1 third. This gives us some idea that what can be our uh, similarity variable. So, let us consider the similarity variable. So, the similarity variable eta we are writing 1 minus r into Peclé number to the power 1 third. Okay. Now, as we are considering 1 by r Peclé number to the power 1 third, then definitely this eta will become of the order of 1. Okay. So, uh, this is the beauty of this uh, similarity analysis. So, uh, by uh, considering that what is the order of delta or the boundary layer thickness, we construct one variable called similarity variable which becomes of the order of 1. Okay. And already we have shown that z is already of order 1. So, we get eta and z coordinate now okay, in place of r and z coordinate. Next, let us see uh, <coughs> further that uh, what will be the value of uh, r from this one as we have defined eta in this fashion. So, little bit of side change we, we can have r equals to 1 minus Peclé number to the power minus 1 third into eta and subsequently 1 minus r square which is nothing but 1 plus r into 1 minus r will be giving me Peclé number to the power minus 1 third into eta into 2 minus that means 1 plus 1 minus Peclé number to the power minus 1 third into eta and multiplication of uh, this two term will be giving me this one. Okay. 2 Peclé number to the power minus 1 third eta minus of Peclé number to the power minus 2 third into eta square. Okay. 
let us proceed further for the uh, derivative of the theta terms ok. So, first uh, del theta del r. So, if you do that uh, theta is a function of eta. So, del theta by del eta into del eta by del r. So, del eta by del r uh, can be found out easily by making derivative of this one. So, this becomes uh, nothing but uh, pe minus Peclé number to the power one third if you make the derivative of uh, eta with respect to r. So, it becomes uh, minus Peclé number to the power one third into del theta by del eta ok. And second derivative subsequently will be giving you uh, um, Peclé number to the power 2 third del square theta del eta square ok. So, once again you do the derivative with respect to this once again chain rule will be giving you uh, uh, Peclé number to the power 2 third ok. Proceeding further if you uh, if you put uh, this uh, derivatives as well as the value of 1 minus r square in your equation that means in your in your equation means over here, over here rather, then you will be finding out this turns out to be like this. This is nothing but your 2 into 1 minus r square, ok, del theta del z 2 by Peclé number. This is nothing but your del square theta del r square, and here you are having 1 by r. So, this is 1 by r term, 1 by 1 minus Peclé number to the power minus 1 third eta, and this one is nothing but your uh, del theta del r, ok, and uh, the axial conduction term remains like this 2 by Peclé number into del square theta del z square little bit of simplification and side change will be giving you like this 4 eta minus Peclé number to the power 1 third eta square into del theta del z is equals to on the right hand side we are having 2 into delta square theta del eta square minus 2 Peclé number to the power minus 2 third del theta del eta by 1 minus Peclé number to the power minus 1 third eta this is nothing but coming due to r plus 2 by Peclé number to the power 2 third delta square theta del z square ok. So, uh, if you can see for a large Peclé number what we can do uh, this term, uh, uh, this term, this term and this term can be cancelled because all are carrying actually uh, Peclé number to the power minus uh, power. So, you can find out only remaining term is nothing but 4 eta del theta del z is equals to 2 into del square theta del eta square. That means, it is nothing but 2 eta del theta del z is equals to del square theta del eta square ok. Uh, let us see the boundary conditions also. So, we find out whenever uh, eta uh, tends eta is equals to 0. Now, eta is equals to 0 means r equals to 1 ok. So, eta equals to 0 means r equals to 1 because we have considered eta equals to 1 minus r into Peclé number to the power 1 third ok. So, we find out that at eta equals to 0 theta equals to 0 because t equals to t w ok. Uh, then similarly, as we have considered uh, um, uh, eta equals to 1 minus r into Peclé number to the power 1 third, uh, though uh, we our boundary condition was at r equals to at r equals to uh, 0, uh, theta will be at r equals to 0 theta del theta del zeta uh, del theta de, uh, del r will be equals to 0. So, from there we are getting that for large Peclé number. So, Peclé number tends to infinity means eta tends to infinity because eta is nothing but 1 minus r into Peclé number to the power 1 third. So, uh, Peclé number becomes uh, very big means eta will be also very big. There we are finding out theta tends to 1 ok. So, and uh, and in case of the inlet we are having at z equals to 0 theta is equals to 1 ok. This is nothing but uh, T i minus T w by T i minus T w ok. So, we got the equation as well as the uh, boundary conditions, two boundary conditions for eta and one boundary conditions for uh, boundary condition for z ok. So, this uh, equation and sets of uh, boundary conditions are actually called uh, Levesque equation and uh, the solution of uh, this one has been proposed by Levesque. Uh, so, let us see how it can be solved. At the beginning what we will be doing, we will be <coughs> trying to find out uh, the stretching variables for that let us take eta star is equals to e to the power alpha 1 into eta. We do not know what is the value of alpha 1, we need to find out. Similarly, z star is equals to e to the power alpha 2 into z and theta star is equals to e to the power alpha 3 into theta. So, by using this we will be trying to find out what are the values of alpha 2, alpha 1 and alpha 3 respectively ok. So, let us put all these values in this equation and the boundary conditions. So, uh, first in the equation if you see uh, if you see uh, there was eta, theta and z. So, subsequently we are having e to the power alpha 2 minus alpha 1 minus alpha 
3 ok. And uh, in the right hand side for the conduction side we are having uh, del square theta del eta square. So, from there we are getting e to the power 2 alpha 1 minus alpha 3 and uh, all the theta and eta is turning out to be theta star and eta star ok. And if you see the corresponding boundary conditions, this is boundary conditions. So, eta tends to 0 means obviously eta star tends to 0. Uh, in that case you find out theta was equals to 0. Now, we are getting e to the power minus alpha 3 theta star is equals to 0. Okay, which gives nothing but uh, for a finite value of uh, alpha 3 this theta star is equals to 0 ok. And uh, for the, uh, for the uh, axis uh, eta star tends to infinity, eta tends to infinity means obviously eta star tends to infinity, we are getting e to the power minus alpha 3 theta star uh, tends to 1 ok. And for the inlet boundary condition z uh, star is equals to 0, we get e to the power minus alpha 3 theta star is equals to 1 ok. Now, from these two equations definitely we can understand that we need to make alpha 3 is equals to 0 ok, because other, uh, it will be simplified version if alpha 3 gets the value of 0, then theta star becomes 1 and theta star becomes 1 over here ok, in the inlet as well as in the uh, axis ok. So, uh, let us now uh, equate uh, the coefficients from the equations ok, uh, from the uh, convection conduction equations. So, we get alpha 2 minus alpha 1 minus alpha 3 is equals to 2 alpha 1 minus alpha 3 and substitute the value of alpha 3 is equals to 0. So, subsequently we get alpha 2 minus alpha 1 is equals to 2 alpha 1 ok. So, from here we can get that alpha 2 is equals to 3 alpha 1 ok. So, ultimately we can then write down eta is nothing but e to the power alpha 1 into eta, eta star is equals to e to the power alpha 1 into eta, z star is equals to e to the power 3 alpha 1 into z and finally, theta star is equals to theta as because alpha 3 is equals to 0 ok. So, if we get so, then it is very easy to find out what can be my similarity uh, variable. So, we can take eta star by z star to the power one third is equals to eta by z to the power one third ok. So, uh, uh, this correlation, uh, this relation can be found out from these two equations easily by eliminating e to the power alpha 1 ok. So, if you do so, then we can get the similarity variable like this. Let us say the similarity variable is zeta. So, we can write down zeta is nothing but eta by z to the power one third and let us take a constant in front of that which is capital A ok. Uh, so, we need to evaluate the value of capital A and as we are having over here you see theta star is equals to theta. So, from here we can take theta is nothing but a function of zeta ok. So, uh, let us use this one and try to first get uh, what are the derivatives of uh, zeta with respect to eta and zeta eta and z ok, because eta is function of eta and uh, zeta is function of uh, eta and z ok. So, here uh, del zeta del eta is equals to a by z to the power one third, uh, because uh, here we are having a eta by z to the power one third ok. Derivative with respect to z of uh, zeta becomes uh, actually uh, this form. So, a eta ok, eta comes as constant and if we do the derivative of z to the power minus one third, then we get minus one third of z to the power minus four third. So, uh, it will be ultimately giving you minus zeta uh, by uh, three z ok. So, uh, both the derivatives we have obtained of zeta, then let us try to get the values of uh, the derivatives of the non-dimensionalized temperature theta. So, first let us see the value of del theta del eta. So, del theta del eta will be obviously as theta is a function of uh, uh, function of zeta now. So, uh, del theta by del zeta into del zeta by del eta ok. So, here you see we are writing del theta by del zeta as theta dashed and del zeta by del eta is nothing but a by z to the power one third. So, we have got the value of del theta by del eta ok, it was there in the uh, convection side ok. Then uh, double derivative 
if, if you see, uh, it was there in uh, radiation uh, in the in the conduction side. Sorry, it is it was there in conduction side. Uh, uh, in same way, uh, uh, if we do the double derivative, because uh, in our conduction side, single derivative term we have neglected for higher Peclet number. So we are uh, only having del square double derivative of theta with respect to zeta. That means del square theta del eta square we are having. Okay, so uh, double derivative of this one. Okay, that means once again if you do the derivative with respect to eta, it gets theta double dashed into a square by z to the power 2 by 3. Okay. On the other hand, if you do the value of, uh, if you find out the value of del theta del z, you will be getting it is nothing but theta dashed del zeta del z. Okay. So, theta dashed del zeta del z is nothing but minus zeta by 3 z. So, that we can plug in over here. So, we have got uh, both del square theta del eta square and del theta del z. So, let us try to put that uh, uh, in the equation. Okay. So, in the in the governing equation, in the governing equation if you remember earlier it was earlier it was uh, uh, something like this. 2 eta del theta del z is equals to delta square theta del eta square. So, here I have got both the derivative values. So, let us try to put that over here quickly. So, we can get uh, uh, 2 eta then this is the value of uh, del theta uh, del z and in the right hand side we are having actually del square theta del eta square. Okay. Little bit of uh, side change and modification it gives me uh, a square theta double dash is equals to minus two third eta by z to the power one third zeta uh, theta dash. Here eta uh, by z to the power one third is uh, uh, nothing but uh, zeta by a. Okay, zeta by a. So, we can ultimately get that theta double dash is equals to minus two third zeta square by a cube theta dash. Okay. And simplified form of this one will be theta double dash plus 2 by 3 a cube zeta square theta dash is equals to 0 with the corresponding boundary conditions. This boundary conditions already we have seen theta equals to 0 means at the wall it is actually equals to 0 and theta uh, tends to infinity uh, that means theta infinity is equals to 1 it is at the axis. Okay. Then uh, let us see how this derivative, uh, how this equation can be integrated. So, for that we are writing 1 by theta dashed and theta double dashed we are writing as del del zeta of theta dashed. Okay. On the right hand side we are having a constant term, uh, not a constant term, it is a function of zeta minus 2 by 3 a cube zeta square. Okay. Now, this can be integrated easily. So, this I am writing as uh, d d zeta of log theta dashed and the right hand side we are having minus 2 by 3 a cube zeta square. Okay. So, if you integrate now one step then you will be getting log theta dash is equals to minus 2 by 9 zeta cube by a cube plus a constant. Okay. To evaluate the constant we will be using the boundary condition. So, uh, uh, before that let us consider here you are having 2 by 9 a cube. So, this let us uh, make a unified uh, uh, constant. So, for that we are considering uh, nothing but a equals to 2 by 9 to the power 1 third. So, if you make a equals to 2 by 9 to the power 1 third then a cube will becomes 2 by 9. As a result you will be finding out that this will become uh, this will become a constant. Okay, This will become a constant 1. So, we get uh, if we choose a equals to 2 by 9 to the power 1 third. So, this coefficient of zeta cube becomes 1. Okay. So, ultimately we get that del theta del z which is uh, del theta del zeta which is nothing but theta dash okay, is equals to this constant we are considering actually uh, logarithmic of b. Okay. So, if we consider logarithmic of b then we are getting ultimately theta dash is equals to b into e to the power minus zeta cube. Here a uh, and uh, subsequently uh, 2 by 9 to the power 1 third has actually given rise to 1. Okay. Then once we get this one, one step further integration if we do, one step further integration if we do from 0 to zeta, we will be getting this is nothing but theta zeta minus theta 0 
uh, putting the upper and lower uh, limits and the right hand side it is nothing but uh, 0 to zeta e to the power minus zeta cube d zeta with a b prefixed over there. Okay. So, uh, if we put the boundary condition that theta 0 is equals to 0 at the wall, uh, so here we find out that theta zeta is equals to b into 0 to zeta e to the power minus zeta cube d zeta. Okay. So, as we have obtained the profile uh, temperature profile in terms of zeta, but only unknown is b. So, let us try to plug in the other boundary condition that means what happens at uh, zeta equals to infinity. So, at theta infinity it is 1 which we have seen as boundary condition is actually equals to b into 0 to infinity zeta will turn out to infinity now ok e to the power minus zeta cube d zeta ok. So, here I get what is the value of b which is nothing but uh, uh, 1 by 0 to infinity e to the power minus zeta cube d zeta. So, once I plug in this value over here theta becomes 0 to zeta e to the power minus zeta cube d zeta divided by 0 to infinity e to the power minus zeta cube d zeta. Okay. So, this we have obtained uh, uh, the profile for uh, theta. Proceeding further if we have to evaluate this integration let us consider zeta cube is equals to t. Okay. So, once we see uh, zeta cube equals to t uh, let us take what is d zeta. So, d zeta turns out to be 1 by 3 t to the power minus 2 third into dt. Okay. So, if we put this value of d zeta over here and zeta cube as t then we obtain this 0 to infinity e to the power minus zeta cube d zeta becomes 0 to infinity e to the power minus t and in place of d zeta we write down 1 third t to the power minus 2 third dt. Okay. Now, here you see this 1 third if we take out this is actually expression of a gamma function 0 to infinity e to the power t into t to the power minus 2 third dt this is actually a gamma function for 1 third. So, we write down gamma 1 third. Okay. This is coming from mathematics once again gamma function is uh, well known in mathematics. Okay. So, we get over here uh, the value of this integration of 0 to infinity e to the power minus zeta cube del zeta is actually uh, uh, one third gamma of one third. Now, uh, using the rule of the gamma function this one third gamma of one third can be written as gamma of four third. Okay. And the value of gamma of four third if you see the gamma tables uh, in mathematics you will be finding out nothing but 0 0.893. Okay. So, we obtain that theta zeta which was earlier uh, like this. Okay. Now, this value is nothing but uh, gamma of uh, four third or 0 0.893. So, we can easily write down this is nothing but 1 by gamma of 4 third 0 to zeta e to the power minus zeta cube d zeta. So, we have obtained the temperature profile in this fashion. Okay. Next, let us try to see the, uh, the heat uh, flux as well as the subsequent heat transfer coefficient and Nusselt number. So, Q uh, the heat flux we know can be written as K into del T del R at R equals to 0 and if you convert R bar to R it becomes K by and T to theta it becomes K by R naught T i minus T w into del theta del R at R equals to 1. Okay. Uh, so, in this uh, if you further put what is the value of heat transfer coefficient h which is nothing but q by T w minus T b. Okay. So, this h uh, uh, if we try to put then another assumption we need to take as r is very small the volume integral of T b will be actually equals to T i. Okay. So, that means you are in thermal entrance length whose length is very small. So, if you do the bulk in that small length you will be finding out very small amount of heat is being added. So, actually the bulk temperature will not be changing much. Bulk temperature can be actually considered very near to T i. So, here we are considering as R is very small T b will be nearly equivalent to T i. Okay. So, uh, this comes from the uh, very small thermal entrance length consideration. Okay. So, if we do so then here you see this T b can be replaced by T i. So, it is nothing but H is equals to Q by T w minus T i. But in some case where uh, 
uh, thermal entrance length is finite so that means a very big one in some fluid case it may happen there this assumption is not possible you have to find out the value of tb in that case but this assumption we are taking over here that tb is more or less near near to this ti for reducing our equations into a simplified form okay the assumption over here is that very small uh, uh, r that means very small zone of the thermal entrance length okay so with this uh, we can write down that if q by tw minus ti is actually h so we can write down h is nothing but minus k by r naught into this derivative del theta del r at r equals to 1 okay so let us try to find out nusselt number further so nusselt number we know that is nothing but h d by k or uh, d is the tube diameter so h2 r naught by k so ultimately nusselt number becomes minus 2 del theta del r at r equals to 1 okay so uh, del theta del r now if you try to convert this r to eta uh, which we have used uh, for similarity variable then we will be getting 2 peclet number to the power one third into del theta del eta eta uh, equals to 0 in this case okay because uh, eta was 1 minus r into peclet number to the power one third okay so if you do further then you see this value del theta del eta we need to find out which is nothing but del theta del zeta into del zeta by del eta okay so del theta by del zeta is theta dashed and del zeta by del eta is 1 a by z to the power one third this already we have seen uh, while deriving the equations okay so subsequently del theta del eta at eta equals to 0 which is required over here is becoming uh, uh, the value of a we have put as we have considered a is nothing but 2 by 9 to the power one third so we are putting it over here 2 by 9 to the power one third theta dashed 0 by z to the power one third okay so this value if we put over here for finding out the nusselt number our nusselt number becomes 2 peclet number to the power one third multiplied by this whole term 2 by 9 to the power one third theta dash 0 by z to the power one third okay so as we have already seen uh, that uh, this can be little bit uh, modified and we know the value of we know the value of theta dash to 0 uh, so what we can do little bit of uh, change of side over here it will be giving me nusselt number is equals to 2 into 2, to the power, 2 by 9 to the power 1 third theta dash 0 by z by peclet number to the power 1 third here we are having peclet number to the power 1 third and here we are having z to the power 1 third this is clubbing up over here as z by peclet number to the power 1 third okay and this uh, factors along with this one point along with this theta dashed 0 as we know the value of theta zeta equals to 0 so theta dashed 0 will be giving me actually 1 by gamma of 4 third so a gamma, gamma of 4 third value is known to me so that if i plug in over here the whole constant will become 1.357 so i get nusselt number uh, uh, in the thermal entrance length is nothing but 1.357 divided by z by peclet number to the power one third in the thermal entrance length region z will be a function okay so let us summarize uh, this lecture uh, in this one we have understood the governing equation for thermally developing but hydrodynamically fully developed forced convection over flat plate having constant temperature over flat no this is not correct uh, convection inside a duct having constant temperature and there we have found out uh, this is the equation 2 eta del theta del z is equals to del square theta del eta square for large peclet number cases okay and the boundary conditions we have seen two boundary conditions for eta this is at the uh, axis this is at the wall and this is at the inlet z boundary condition required because z is of order one okay over here so this solution we have called as uh, levick solution and we have proceed further to find out what is the nusselt number coming out to be for thermally developing but hydrodynamically fully developed uh, forced convection uh, inside a duct having uh, constant temperature so this become nusselt number is equals to 1.357 by z by peclet number to the power one third okay so this we have proved in the last slide okay so just like your uh, other lectures let us also test how you have understood we are having 
having three questions over here. Uh, uh, first one goes like this, in thermally developing but hydrodynamically fully developed region, radial conduction is of the order, we are having four options, one by Peclet number, one by Peclet number into one by delta square, one by Peclet number into one by delta and Peclet number. Okay. So, obviously, we have discussed about this one, the correct answer is obviously B, one by Peclet number into one by delta square. Second question is like this, in thermally developing region with constant wall temperature, Nusselt number, which statement is correct? Statement A is constant, statement B depends on Z, statement C depends on Peclet number and statement D both B and C are true. Okay. So, this already we have seen in the expression of Nusselt number that uh, the Nusselt number depends on both Z and Peclet number. So, answer D is the correct one. Last question is velocity profile in thermally developing and hydrodynamically fully developed region is uh, four options we are having parabolic, flat head, linear or no conclusions can be made. We do not know what is the velocity profile. Okay. So, obviously, you know as it is hydrodynamically fully developed, the correct answer is parabolic. So, this was so simple question. Okay. So, with this we end uh, this lecture. In our next lecture, we will be discussing about same thing thermal entrance region, but we will be uh, taking the conditions as constant heat flux or uniform heat flux case. Okay. So, if you are having any query regarding this lecture or any other uh, general query about convection heat transfer, please keep on posting in our discussion forum. Thank you.